eGPUs have become more and more popular in recent years, and many people are now considering buying a MacBook Pro with base graphics and adding an eGPU with something like a Vega 64 or Radeon 7 graphics card instead of buying a fully specced out 8-core Vega 20 model. The idea is that you'll get a portable MacBook to use on the go while getting a ton of extra performance at home with the ability to upgrade the graphics down the line. The concept sounds great, but we've discovered that in a lot of cases, you really don't gain that much performance and in some cases, you actually lose performance. And we've also found a way for you to check out your current machine to see if you'll benefit from an eGPU or not. So stick around until the end to find out how. In this video, we tested both the $400 Vega 64 and $700 Radeon 7 graphics cards using the $300 Razer Core X GPU enclosure, which is in our opinion, the best and most reliable enclosure you can currently buy for the cash. We'll have links to all of these down in the description below. Let's get started with Geekbench 4's graphics test. As you can see, the eGPUs offer a decent jump in raw graphics performance over Vega 20 graphics in the MacBook Pro, and the Radeon 7 actually surpasses the performance of the iMac, which is nice, but it should be getting a lot more than that, seeing as using this card in a Windows PC actually gets you around 210,000 points. The score is much lower for two reasons. First of all, eGPUs send data through Thunderbolt 3, so there's a lot of efficiency loss, and reason number two is that even though we're on macOS 10.14.5, the drivers for the card are still not fully optimized. Now let's move on to the Unigen Heaven Gaming Benchmark. We actually start to see the Radeon 7 shine, with over twice as much FPS as the Vega 20 graphics, so if you're a gamer, an eGPU will actually help a lot. One thing I do want to mention is that for the best results, you should always use an external display plugged directly into the eGPU, and force each program to use it by right-clicking on the app in the Applications folder within Finder, clicking Get Info, and selecting Prefer eGPU. Now moving on to some Final Cut Pro video editing tests. We ran the standard Bruce X benchmark, which basically just uses 100% graphics, and saw a really good performance boost over the MacBook Pro by itself. But for some reason, the Vega 64 actually did just as well. We'll explain why this is happening in just a minute. Now on to stabilizing a 20 second clip. Both eGPUs perform exactly the same and only a bit faster than the MacBook Pro by itself. And here's where it gets interesting. This test is exporting a 5 minute clip of standard H.264 4K footage, which is basically what most YouTubers are working with every day. We actually got much slower times with the eGPUs, and interestingly, the Vega 64 was faster than the Radeon 7. So why the heck is the MacBook Pro faster by itself? Well, this type of project is already really easy and efficient for the standard MacBook because of the hardware decoding and encoding with QuickSync. Using an eGPU adds a lot of extra steps and bottlenecks, requiring the data to go from the CPU to the Thunderbolt controller, through the Thunderbolt cable, and then to the graphics to be rendered, and then back again to the CPU to be encoded instead of doing everything inside of the MacBook Pro by itself with no bottlenecks. For the previous tests like Unigen in Heaven and BruceX, the graphics is the bottleneck, so those scenarios can use an eGPU to its full potential. Now before we move on to some more difficult tasks, like Red Raw and Canon Raw, I need to give a shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering almost any creative and entrepreneurial skill you can think of. Want to get great at video editing? Check out specific classes based on the program and skills you want to improve. If you want to learn how to make videos, we would recommend Low Budget Filmmaking by Maddie Brown. You'll also find classes on photography, graphic design, animation, web development, and even things like business. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the description and get a two-month free trial. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is a perfect place to keep you learning and thriving, and it's also incredibly affordable with annual subscriptions at less than $10 a month. Get access to unlimited classes today by starting your two-month free trial by using the link below. Now, some users are starting to move on to HEVC where the MacBook Pro by itself performs better than the Vega 48 iMac. That's because it's packing Apple's T2 chip that has hardware, HEVC, and coding. The reason the eGPUs are slower is the same as before. And once again, the Radeon 7 is slower than the Vega 64. Now let's move on to some more advanced editing. 4.5K Red Raw, which is heavily dependent on the processor and not on the graphics. Here, we see that the iMac is the fastest because it has the most powerful processor, with the MacBook Pro trailing behind with or without an eGPU. As you can see in the screenshot, the CPU is completely maxed out and the eGPU is basically doing nothing because it has to wait on the CPU to process the raw footage. And now onto C200 RAW, which uses a ton of graphics power, we finally see the eGPU speeding things up, 
and that's because the MacBook Pro by itself was limited by the Vega 20 graphics. In fact, you'll see in the screenshot that even the Radeon 7 graphics was the limiting factor, since it was 100% maxed out at full usage, while the CPU was chilling at just 39% usage. And again, the iMac was faster because it doesn't have to deal with Thunderbolt 3 inefficiencies. So these were obviously video editing tests which don't use just the graphics, so if you're doing something like gaming or some other task that really uses tons of graphics power, you're gonna see speed boosts similar to the Bruce X and Unigen Heaven results we got earlier. But to be honest, the bump in speed isn't really what we were expecting, especially since the Vega 48 should be much slower than even the Vega 64 but it isn't because of eGPU efficiency loss. Even worse, the Radeon 7 performed basically the same as the Vega 64, and it costs about $300 more. This honestly makes us think that Apple took the easy route of repurposing the Vega 64 drivers for the Radeon 7, since both the benchmarks and real world results are so similar, while the same GPU performs about 50% better in Windows. Hopefully Apple will finally have decent drivers for it when macOS Catalina comes out this September. But for now, we recommend just buying the Vega 64 and saving $300 if you're gonna use it in an eGPU. If you're a video editor using Final Cut Pro, do not buy an eGPU for your MacBook Pro, unless you're editing very specific footage like C200 RAW that is very graphics intensive. And even then, the performance isn't that much better considering you have to deal with the little glitches and issues that come with using an eGPU, like your display randomly going black out of nowhere. Other apps like Resolve and Premiere Pro may see more gains from an eGPU, and we're currently testing that and we'll post a video on the Max Yuri of channel, so make sure to subscribe to that. If you're wondering if you'll benefit from using an eGPU, we have a simple test you can run to find out if you'll gain performance or not. Download iStat Menu 6 from Django.com, and while you're doing your specific graphical work like 3D animation, for example, click on the CPU icon in the taskbar, and if the blue processor bar in the graphics section is fully maxed out, while the CPU is not really being used, that means you'll benefit from an eGPU. Now, if both the CPU and GPU usage are nearly maxed out, that means that if you buy an eGPU, your processor will most likely become the bottleneck and you might not see that much performance gains. But if your CPU is completely maxed out and your graphics is not being used much, you won't gain anything from using an eGPU at all. Now how about for other Macs? Should you buy an eGPU for your iMac? Probably not. Because of the Thunderbolt cable inefficiencies, you probably won't see much gains at all and you'll probably lose performance if you're using an iMac Pro. Now Mac Mini users will benefit the most from an eGPU because it doesn't come with a dedicated graphics chip at all, so you kind of have to get an eGPU for heavy graphics work. So there you have it, that's why most people should not buy an eGPU for the 2019 MacBook Pro. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to tap like and click the circle above to subscribe, and make sure to check out those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.